What's up team? Welcome back to Altcoin Daily, where we bring you daily videos on everything altcoin, everything cryptocurrency. My name's Austin. Today we're doing a deep dive on basic attention token. This is something that I'm really passionate about, and I know a lot of you guys have been asking for more information on basic attention token. So the goal of today's deep dive is to find out exactly what it is, what problems are they trying to solve, we're gonna look at the white paper. Um, we're gonna talk about, is this a good investment? Is this something worth keeping on the radar? Uh, we're gonna get into all this. And then at the very end, I wanna bring you guys an article that came out just a few days ago, which I took a lot of value in. And we're just gonna talk about what BAT is doing today to keep itself in the headlines. Alrighty, and remember, if you haven't already, and you want to stay up to date on daily altcoin deep dives or daily cryptocurrency check-ins, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Let's get to it. What is basic attention token? Well, BAT is looking to improve the effectiveness of online advertising. So they want to improve the experience for the user, for the advertiser, and for the publisher. So the user are people like you and me that are just scrolling through Facebook all day, uh, looking at YouTube videos all day, reading online articles. Just common folk, just like you and me, user. The advertiser are people that you know have their products or services in the ad banner on the side, or maybe the advertisement at the beginning of the video. Those are the advertisers. And then the publisher, those are the people that have the content. Uh, Forbes.com, that, that's an example of a publisher. Something like that, that can afford to uh, sell ad space on their content. So the goal of basic attention token is to optimize the experience for the users, advertisers, and the publishers. For me personally, just from a user perspective, I don't even like advertisements. If I see a skip ad thing on my YouTube video, I'm skipping it. Um, so in any way they can optimize my experience, I'm listening. Basic attention token, I'm listening. Uh, let's get into specifics though. So why would a user adopt BAT? And better question, why would a publisher and why would an advertiser adopt basic attention token? What's in it for them? Well, let's identify the problem. The problem is digital advertising is being overrun by middlemen, trackers, and fraud. So just from the user perspective, how are we being abused? Well, up to 50% of, of the average user's mobile data is for ads and trackers, costing as much as $23 a month. Also, ads decrease phone battery life by as much as 21%. That's crazy to me. When I found out about this information that ads that you know most of us don't even like costing us money, costing us data, and phone battery, I definitely understand why a user would adopt basic attention token. Um, but why would a publisher? What's the problem? Well, Google and Facebook, two of the biggest fat cat publishers, take 73% of all ad dollars and 99% of all growth. So those, those big companies, big publishers like Facebook, Google, Amazon, that's a very centralized um, market. They're the ones calling all the shots. Um, and what they're doing is they're the ones putting trackers on us. They're the ones that are creating these digital profiles, um, which eats up all their mobile data, you know, costs us money. And the scary thing is, um, first of all, that's creepy. But the scary thing is um, over 600 million phones and desktops are running ad blocker. So what they're trying to do isn't even working for 600 million um, phones and desktops. So I definitely see why a publisher might want to adopt BAT. And then the advertiser, basically, they, basically targeting is poor, making users more likely to ignore ads. They just want a return on investment. Um, they're spending the money for a reason. So let's get into how basic attention token is going to solve this problem because we've identified the problem. Now, how do we solve it? Well, they're going to do it with blockchain digital advertising, creating a decentralized, transparent digital ad exchange based on Ethereum blockchain. 
So there's three stages to this right now. The first one, and this is one of the really cool things, stage one already out, already implemented, already done. And what that is, is the Brave browser. So this browser is just like uh, a browser, just like Google Chrome, just like Firefox. And what differentiates this is that it blocks mal advertisements, trackers, and contains a ledger system that anonymously captures user attention. So, um, I, uh, you can, you, we can all download this, this right now. Uh, it's right on their website for Windows or for Mac. And I actually did download this for all you guys, for all of us. And full disclosure, right now I'm filming this on Google Chrome. And the only reason I'm not filming this video on Brave browser is because they didn't have any highlight um, extensions. But I think I am going to adopt uh, Brave browser. And let me show you why. The cool thing about this is that in a button right up here, it'll tell you, you know, how many trackers are blocked, how many ads are blocked, how much time you saved uh, just by using Brave browser. Which led me to one specific question. I mean, on Google Chrome right now, I have ad blocker. And sometimes this will tell me, like, hey, five ads blocked. I can see that. So what's really the difference between you know, trackers that you would find on Google Chrome and what they're doing, a ledger system that anonymously captures user attention. And the difference is that, the anon, anonymin, anonymity, excuse me, uh, the anonymity shield. And uh, the ledger, the decentralized ledger, allows Brave Browser to capture this information by, by keeping your anonymity shield strong. Um, so no trackers get through, which is cool to me. That that difference in itself is enough for me to maybe think about seriously switching to Brave Browser. Uh, let's talk about steps two and three, because right now, stage one done. You guys can all find that today. Uh, stage two is creating the basic attention token, and basically the token's utility is derived from user attention. And they describe user attention as attention is really just focused mental engagement. So they're using this coin to be able to reward the publisher, the advertiser, the user. And it all comes together in step three, creating the blockchain-based digital technology. And the benefit for those three parties to adopt this blockchain technology is publishers receive more revenue because middlemen and fraud are reduced. Users who opt in receive fewer but better targeted ads that are less prone to malware and advertisers just get a better return on investment. So this chart basically just explains what we just talked about, but the publisher, the reason they would switch to BAT is they are gonna receive tokens um, as ads are viewed on their site. That's what's in it for them. Users are gonna get tokens uh, if they choose to receive ads. So you and me can make a little money uh, by choosing to receive ads from advertisements that we like. And then advertisers, they just get a better ROI. They know their ads are going to a good place. And keep in mind, with this decentralized blockchain, we get that an anonymity shield. Alrighty. All this in general excited me. Anything is better than having centralized Facebook and Google make all those choices and spy on me. Um, privately, I'd much rather have a decentralized version. And the thing I really like about this in general is they're creating a new standard and they're valuing the user while valuing the advertiser and publisher so we all benefit. Let's check out the white paper. The cool thing about the website is a lot of the website is just a, I mean, all of what's in the white paper was discussed on the website in more simplistic terms. There are two things I wanna show you guys on the white paper. First off, the competition. So they flat out define their competition in the white paper, and I'll just summarize it for you real quick. Reddit Gold, which is the premium membership. Um, Steam, which is another cryptocurrency that uses blockchain. Uh, Blendle, which I wasn't too sure what that is, but it's a kind of iTunes for journalism. And then Google. Google is a big competitor of theirs. And the one I wanna just focus on with you real quick is Steam. Because they're, because basic attention tokens solution um, to all these competitors is blockchain technology. But 
Steam uses blockchain technology too. So the question we have to ask ourselves is what makes basic attention token better than Steam, if anything at all? Um, so Steam, what is it? Steam operates on the, basic, on the basis of one Steam, one vote. Under this model, individuals who have contributed the most to the platform, as measured by their account balance, have the most influence over how co contributions are scored. Um, so Steam, um, the difference from, from my research that I found is that Steam, you can really, it's like basically a Reddit or a blog type um, platform, and you can only really use Steam on the Steam platform. And as far as I know, um, it, it's not available on other platforms to use, as opposed to Bat, once you have the browser, you can use it on Reddit, you can use it on any website that you pull up on the browser. So that to me differentiates um, them from Steam. Also Steam's a full year older than um, Basic Attention Token and Basic Attention Token doesn't hide it. They say they're out to beat Steam. Um, and the next thing and last thing I wanna show you on here is the team. Just because in order to find out if we think somebody's gonna be successful in the future, we definitely have to look at the past. Uh, we have to look at the track record. Uh, a lot of smart people on this team. We're just gonna discuss a few of them. Again, I haven't mentioned this yet, but I'm not a financial advisor by any means. Um, so please do your own research. Together, we're gonna check out the CEO and the lead developer though, because to me, those are the two important ones, even though we could spend a whole video talking about all these guys. Um, but where do these guys come from? Basically, they both worked at Mozilla, um, Brian is the lead developer, and Brendan Eich is the CEO. And in terms of track record, they have all led very successful companies. You know, they have engineer backgrounds, uh, they have developer backgrounds. Um, and the thing that kind of differentiates them is they both came from the internet when it was very centralized, when ad space was very centralized. You guys can do your, you know, really dig into these, um, um, backgrounds if you want. I just want to bring one thing of value to you guys in terms of who who Bra Brendan Eich is and Brian Bondi. I uh, I found an article, I found a video, an interview I should say, uh, that came out about three, four months ago. Um, Brendan Eich, the CEO, did a full hour long video in his car um, with Box Mining, this guy where they asked him all about um, BAT. And we're actually not going to watch it because they, they do ramble a lot and I don't want to waste your guys' time. But I just like what he said, what Brendan said that really differentiates. What is their core competency for their team that differentiates themselves? And Brendan, he came from JavaScript, one, JavaScript, one of the main guys there. And he talks about how his companies and advertising evolved through opportun opportunistic measures, through cookies, through... Uh, tracking and all this rose up through JavaScript so he was there at the beginning and then it all got blocked by ad blockers and that is the reason he and Brian left to um, create this decentralized solution because they were very dissatisfied so with, for him his core com competency is that he was there from the beginning um, and he watched this advertisement uh, come to rise and then fail because everything was so centralized. So for him, that's what differentiates him. Uh, for me, I got a lot of uh, value out of this video, so I'm gonna give it a like. If you guys get some value out of this video, I encourage to give this you to give this video a like or watch this full interview on your own. Um, but I want to move on because I don't want to waste your guys' time. We're gonna get to one more thing. So we talked about the team, we talked about the competition. I want to get to this article because this article just came out a few days ago and it says Dow Jones Media Group to publish using Brave's BAT tokens. So I'm going to read you two things. Um, a limited number of users who download the Brave browser will be granted access to one of two Dow Jones Media Group's global brands, either Barron's.com or a premium market watch newsletter. The experiment is designed to test Brave's blockchain-based digital advertising, um, which is to be fully integrated with Brave's software 
proprietary crypto token, BAT. What does this mean? Uh, the thing that excited me most about this is that, that to me this is a game changer in the sense that publishers are seeing value. Obviously, everything we've talked about today, uh, the users, I see a lot of value. I definitely know why I would benefit from this. But the cool thing about this article is that the publishers are finally seeing value. They're testing this out. This is a quote from the senior vice president at Barron describing the deal. Our partnership with Brave is an exciting and innovative step for Dow Jones Media Group. As a global digital publishers, we believe it is important to continually explore new and emerging technologies that can be used to build quality customer experiences. It's cool because they see the value. Um, I really expect more um, articles to come out like this in the next year in terms of different other publishers adopting this technology. Um, let's bring it in. Out of everything to talk about, we talked about today, what are the takeaways? Um, for me, I think the basic takeaways is advertising is definitely changing. It is way more personal and basic attention token, they get that. For, for me personally, I love basic attention token. Um, I took out a position in them. Again, I'm no advisor, you guys do what you want. For me, I see it as definitely a long-term hold just because I believe in this blockchain and what they're doing and the, um, I believe anything that has to do with social media and advertising, that's definitely gonna be around four or five years from now. So that's what I like to bet in, bet on. And the other thing I liked about basic attention token is that it, it has utility. You know, it, it is solving real world problems. And also it has an active product right now that you and me can use, the, the browser. Um, so at its peak, back in December, January, when everything was peaking, uh, it was about a little over 90, I think 95 cents. Right now it's at 43. So, I mean, I think it's a steal. It looks like it might be going up, might be leveling off. Um, I see it as a long-term hold. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, if you got any value from today's video, please give it a like. And I just want to give one last shout out to Happy Chasers HD. Yesterday, my brother did a video, just a Sunday cryptocurrency check-in. And at the end of that video, he asked, what do you guys want to know about cryptocurrency? Uh, my brother and I talk all the time about what can we do to bring as much value to you guys as we can, just because we're trying to grow this community. We're really passionate about cryptocurrency. And Happy Chaser HD took us up on that offer. He says, I like that. They have a working product out. Probably a good project to deep dive in. That was yesterday. And thank you, Happy Chaser. Um, I totally agree. Very much worth the deep dive. Uh, let me know in this comment section if you got any value from today, what you guys think about Basic Attention Token, and what else you guys want us to do deep dives in. Alrighty team, I'll talk to you later. Peace.